Welcome to another edition of Gethsemane. We're so glad that you have joined us and have gathered in this place to study God's word. Listen, we want you to hit that like button, that share button. Let's get the message of the gospel out to all four corners of the world. It's a blessing to be here and study with you uh, on today. We're also so thankful for all of our supporters. We thank you for supporting this ministry, uh, not just by your likes or not just by subscribing, but we thank you for sowing a seed. We thank you uh, for whatever donation that you give you can be able to see uh, there where you can be able to hit those links and you can be able uh, to support and financially give your donation uh, uh, to support this ministry uh, we're going to open up with a word of prayer and then on today we'll begin our lesson Father in heaven, we thank you for your blessings we thank you for your word we pray father that it will guide us correct us strengthen us and bless us in your holy and your righteous name we pray amen Bless it, bless it. Our question today comes from our YouTube subscriber, Steph D3811. Uh, and he states, what happens if a person is attempting to get baptized on a Wednesday night uh, and the preacher says, oh, you got to wait till Sunday morning, but the person gets into a car accident? Does he make it? What? Uh, that person doesn't get to go to heaven because of the day uh, of the week? What if a person can't be baptized in water? He states, what if they're in prison? What if they're in the hospital or fully uh, accept Jesus Christ into their heart and life and then go into a coma? What then? No water, no Holy Spirit. No, I don't believe that at all. What if an individual hears about Jesus Christ? in a third world country and there is absolutely no body of water around nowhere than what no the God I serve is way bigger than the inconvenience of being fully immersed in some water uh, baptism washing renewal happens when a person hears the gospel uh, and believes regardless if a body of water is nearby or not now I was baptized there was water available but I wasn't baptized as soon as I accepted Jesus Christ into my heart it took a while it had to be arranged but before going down into the water drastic changes were already taking place uh, without the watery immersion washing uh, it was uh, unbelievable uh, thank you so much Steph D uh, 3811 for giving your thoughts your comments and even your frustration uh, I can hear I can hear your frustration uh, in your questions and you you gave many different questions so uh, kind of what I <laughs> What I, what I want to approach this, I want to approach this with uh, empathy and understanding your frustration. And I hope that as we go through this study, uh, that we will kind of break down and hopefully at the end of this be on the same page. Now, there's a great possibility that there are some of you who also have similar questions. And so your question uh, that may arise, like what if, like what, what, what if there's no water and what, what if there's no preacher available in that uh, region? What if a person gets sick? What if a person gets in a car accident? What if, what if, what if, what if, right? Uh, and so let's let's find out what the Bible says and then let's just preach the, the, the Bible. This is outside of how you feel. This is outside of what you think. Uh, matter of fact, whenever you're having a Bible study, it's not emotional. It really shouldn't be emotional that you should start off with. My emotions and studying the word of God comes out. After, not before. So it's very dangerous to approach the word of God with your emotions uh, because sometimes your emotions can blind what thus saith the Lord. Okay. So if you're, if, uh, and, and like I said, you have several questions, there are several things that I want to address that we can't study. So there are several things that you have mentioned in your questions that we cannot study. And I want to address those first. So one of the things that uh, we cannot study because it's not found in the scriptures 
is the idea that you are saved if you accept Jesus in your heart. Matter of fact, I don't know any teaching. I don't I don't know any scripture. And if you do, please, somebody, please let me know. And maybe I uh, and, and I'm not here as I know all scriptures and know all things. Right. So I might be wrong. What I'm asking you. I've never read it, and I do not believe it's in the Bible. I don't know of any apostle. I don't know of any Jesus' teaching. I don't know any word that comes from God that commands people people to accept Jesus in your heart. Matter of fact, that, that phrase, being connected to salvation, is confusing to me. I don't know where it came from. So I would not get up in front of a body of people and tell them, y'all raise your hand and accept Jesus into your heart. Where does that come from? So the reason why you can't study it, uh, and, and I know that that was a statement in one of your questions that you had accepted Jesus into your heart. I don't, what is that? I don't, I don't know what that is. I know about preaching the gospel. I know about receiving the gospel and receiving the gospel is, do you believe it or not? But accept Jesus into your heart. I don't know what verse you're coming from. We need to stop saying that. We, we need to stop repeating that. It sounds good. Um, un unless, unless you're saying that you love, uh, un unless you're making the statement, Jesus is in my heart and I love him. The, the, the love of God dwells in my heart. Now that's a scripture. <laughs> the love of God dwells in my heart. Um, but, but that scripture only pertains to those who have been baptized into Christ. If I am a non-believer, darkness and, li and light doesn't mix. So the act of, ma matter of fact, if you were to give instructions to someone on how they would accept Jesus into their heart, I, I would want to be in that audience. I don't know how you do that. I don't know how you do that. Now, I'm aware that you have to be taught the gospel. I'm aware that you have to believe the gospel. So if that's what you're referring to, then oh, then OK. Um, but as an unbeliever, hearing about Jesus Christ and then commanding Jesus to come into your heart is not that's not a Bible study. You can't study that because it's nowhere found. Matter of fact, there is nobody in the Bible that was an unbeliever who called on Jesus to come into their heart. Nobody ever did that. To the point where they called on Jesus and Jesus came and entered into their heart. There's no scripture that states that. So I don't know where we're getting that from, right? So even though you say you accepted Jesus, I would encourage you to use, um, maybe you're, you're, you're referring to something different, or use, I would use different words or different definition uh, or terms. Um, but if I was to ask anybody, if you was to ask anybody, accepting Jesus in your heart, where, what scripture is that? They would, ne they would not be able to tell you. They would talk to you for 20 minutes. Oh, what that means is, no, 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 I don't want you to tell me what it means. I want you to show me where it says, accept Jesus in your heart. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't read that. I, I've never studied that. So, and then, like I said, I may, I may be overlooking a verse, right? I'm not saying that I've, uh, <laughs> I'm more knowledgeable than everybody else. I'm saying I've never read it. It, as far as my understanding, it's not in the word of God. If you find a scripture that says or states that an unbeliever called Jesus into their heart, and accepted Jesus into their heart, show me that verse. And if you show me, I'll believe it, right? It's, it, I'll have no problem making an adjustment. I don't teach that because I've never studied it and I've never read it and I've never found it in the scripture. So we got to stop saying that phrase unless you find the scripture, right? Um, then, then the next part of your question deals with... Um, uh, and I'm going to deal with judgment, right? Like I said, I, I hear your frustration. You saying, why does it have to be water, right? Why does it have to be water? Um, but, but before I get to water and before I get to baptism, what I want to deal with is judgment. I want to deal with judgment. If you turn to Matthew chapter 24, and I want to look at verse 30. Uh, 
Matthew chapter 24 and verse 30. The Bible says, And then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he shall send his angels with a great sound of trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other so i want to look at matthew chapter 24 and i want us to look uh, at verse 14, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14, as we deal with uh, judgment, the Bible says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. The Bible lets us know that the gospel has to go out. That before judgment day begins, the gospel will be preached all over the world. The Bible says that after the gospel is preached and all all over the world, then the end will come. Then I want you to move over. If we have that understanding, then I want you to move over to Matthew chapter 25 and Matthew chapter 25. And I want us to look at verse 31. When the son of man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. The Bible says, I want you to skip down um, to verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me. You cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. So what the Bible lets us know, and, and, and we should understand from these scriptures, we just read Matthew 24 and, and also Matthew 25. It talks about judgment day. So when you gave the example about uh, what if somebody heard the gospel and then they got into a car accident or they got into a coma or let's say there was no war. What if? What if? Well, what if this happened? Here, there is a judgment day. And I want to say this to the body of Christ. I want to say this to the church of Christ. Whenever you're sharing the gospel with somebody, whenever you're teaching somebody, we do not send people to heaven and we do not send people to eternal punishment. I'll preach the gospel to you today. If you believe it and you'll be willing to repent of your sins, if you'll be if you'll be open and, and with a believing heart to make your confession unto Jesus Christ and be baptized today in that watery grave and having your sins washed away, you still have to wait for judgment day to determine where you're going. See, there is a judge and Jesus is the judge. God is the judge. On top of that, the Bible says there is a day that this will occur. That day has not happened yet. So when somebody says, uh, what if somebody heard the gospel and they got in a car accident and they died or they, ha they had a heart attack on their way to get baptized? Are you telling me that they're going to eternal? I'm what I'm telling you is they're going to have to they're going to have to meet God. <laughs> They're going to have to meet God. So if your question is about eternal punishment, um, if your question is about whether or not, you know, do, will we will we make it here or make it there? Well, that's that's between God. That's we don't make a determination if a person goes to heaven or eternal punishment. Matter of fact, I can get up on Sunday and preach the gospel. And after I preach the gospel, 10 people can walk down and get baptized and they can go down into the water and come up and we will celebrate and we will say glory. Hallelujah. But I don't know who really believed and who really uh, and who did it. And it's not my job. We don't have any tool or utensil to walk around the people to determine 
determine if whether or not you you really believe from the heart. People get baptized for all kind of reasons. People get baptized because they 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 made a mistake and they they want to start all over. Some people get baptized because they want to get married and their spouse said, "Hey, listen, I ain't going I ain't going to marry you until you get baptized." Some people get baptized because that's what they mama really wanted them to do and their mother passed away. And so that next Sunday they said, "Mama, I'm I'm going to get baptized for you." All of those are for the wrong reason. Getting baptized for somebody else, getting baptized to be in a relationship or be married, getting baptized because you feel guilty, getting baptized because you just want a fresh, brand new start in your life. All of those are wrong reasons to be baptized. But I can't look in your heart. You can lie to me. You can lie to the church. You can go to you. You can leave uh, uh, Oklahoma and travel all the way to New York and go to a congregation there in New York and lie to everybody in New York and tell them I, I was baptized when I was 15 at the Church of Christ on Elm Street. The average person would be like, oh, okay, hey, brother. Hey, sis, how you, and welcome. And you can, we don't know, but you're going to have to face God, though. Matthew chapter 24 if, if you've never if you want if you want to know what happens on judgment day read Matthew 24 and Matthew chapter 25 I encourage you to do that because that answers when you when you ask the question what if we don't do what ifs in the church of Christ we don't do what ifs well what if, I don't, hey listen that's a that's a judgment day question and the one that's going to answer that question is God on judgment day that ain't my business well, what? Well, what if a person? Uh, what if a person re really wanted to uh, come to Jesus Christ, but they weren't able to? Well, I, um, let me say this: I believe we have such a great judge. Nobody should be worried on Judgment Day of whether or not you're going to get a great judge. God is a great judge. Can I tell you about God for a minute? He's full of grace. He's full of mercy. He's full of compassion. His love never fails. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you right now. I don't know what your I don't know what their circumstances were or whatever the case may be. I know this. To come before God Matter of fact, I would prefer to face God in, uh, before, <laughs> instead of facing some of my peers. I would rather stand before God than, than stand before some of y'all and, and have to wait for my fate, depending on how y'all feel today. I, I would rather be before God whose mercy and whose love never fails. Right. So here's, here's what God looks at. God looks at the time. God knows when you heard the gospel. God knows how many people came to you and was trying to introduce the gospel to you. God knows how many times you said no. God knows how uh, how many days you were hard headed. God is fully aware of your obstacles. God considers all of those things. When I preach the gospel, I don't see none of those things. So if I'm preaching at a funeral, I don't send people to heaven. And I don't send people to eternal punishment. Notice I didn't say hell. It's eternal punishment. It's not hell. Right? I don't send I don't send people to, to, to heaven and I don't send people to eternal punishment. The Bible says in Matthew chapter, let me read it again. God said in uh, Matthew chapter 24 in verse 33, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. What is verse 33 letting us know? Verse 33 letting us know it is God that's go going to separate. Now, on Judgment Day, everybody's going to be together. Well, I know they didn't make it to hell. Well, you don't know nothing. God can decide to have mercy. But I, I, I know this. When it comes to what's going to happen to a person after they die, that's a Judgment Day question. And the judge on that day will answer that question by considering all of the factors we don't see. And listen, you may love that person. You you may feel like, you know, um, I, 
God, God, I, I, I know you're not going to send them. Well, listen, God sees things you don't see. And some of us may be surprised. Some of the people that we thought was going to make it, they may not make it. And some of the people that we just we just knew for sure they weren't going to make it. They may be the first ones to enter in because you don't you don't see everything. You don't know everything. You only know people from the angle in which you interact with them. Some of y'all, y'all been knowing people for 20 and 30 years. Maybe your mama, your daddy, your friend, your cousin or whatever the case may be. You've been knowing them for 30 and 40 years, but you never saw them at work. You didn't live with them. You don't know what they did at night. You, you don't know some of their thoughts. Some of the most wicked people in the world. You don't you don't know what they you don't know what their prayers were and you don't know when they were baptized and you you don't you don't know you don't know everything. So when I get up and preach and or when you go and share the gospel, st stop trying to send people places. The only thing that I'm trying to do is tell you what the Bible says. Now, whether you believe it or not, that's your business. And if you choose not to get into water, that's your business, too. But but I'm I'm teaching you and telling you what thus saith the Lord. Now, if you don't want to do it, that's your business. But you cannot give salvation to people outside of what the Bible says. The Bible tells you how to receive salvation. So next scripture I want to take you to is John chapter three. In John chapter three, Jesus is talking to Nicodemus. And as Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, Jesus is very clear about what he what he says in, in pertaining to the kingdom and salvation. John chapter three. Uh, and verse two, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that you do, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night and says, I know you come from God. Jesus lets him know in verse three, but unless you're born again, listen, I'm going to keep repeating this verse until I die. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your circumstances are. I don't care if you're in a desert and there is no water to be found. Your circumstances don't change scriptures. Scripture changes circumstances. That's it. Your circumstances doesn't give you a pass to ignore scripture. Scripture imposes and changes your circumstances or your environment. So if you found yourself in a desert place and you're reading this scripture, you better go find some water because your circumstances will never change this verse. I'm going to preach this verse. Don't get. And you know what? The frustration. You're not mad at us. You're mad at the script. The scripture says you must be born again. And let me tell you this. And you can't change the recipe. Salvation has a recipe. I don't care. There are a lot of preachers today, a lot of people that stop preaching it. I still believe that the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You have to hear about the teaching, the life, and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, that he shed his blood, and that he made the Holy Spirit available to anybody who desires to be saved. Now, if you hear that gospel then you must hear, you must believe, you must repent, you must confess, and you must be baptized. I don't care how many times they make fun of the, of the steps toward salvation. I don't care uh, if people try to downplay it. People get tired of hearing it. You didn't get tired. Take a nap and wake up, uh, but it will never change. The gospel and the, and the steps to salvation will never change. I don't care what your situation. I don't care how sick you are. I don't I don't care what the environment is. I don't care if you're in the middle of a winter storm and nobody's moving. The gospel is still the gospel. Right now, I just said earlier before we got here, you must be born again. That's never going to change. You have to be born again. But God is. But God is going to consider all things on Judgment Day. So why are you stressed? Why are you worried about somebody who's living in a desert, desert or a third world country? God will take care of them. I don't stress about that. Well, none of them were baptized. What's going to happen to them? Why are you asking me what's going to happen on Judgment Day? Judgment Day hasn't happened yet. I don't know what's going to happen. 
I know God's word is true. I, I know his word. I know the, 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 the Bible says that the world will pass away, uh, pass away, but his word will stand true. The word ain't never going nowhere. So everybody's going to be judged by the word. Now, God is going to consider all things. And that's his business. If God decided to give an extra dose of grace to somebody, that's God's business. <laughs> you know what? I don't, I don't like to mess with God's business. That's God's business. Matter of fact, I got enough stuff to worry about in my life. Why am I worried about where people going to go and how they going to end up and what decision to make? You stressing me out. That's a, that's, that's a God's work. Let God do his work and you do your work. What is our work? Our work is to tell people what the gospel says. Can I can I just repeat the verse? It ain't coming from me. Don't get mad at me. It's just from the verse. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The Bible says in verse four, Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Great question, Nicodemus. Can he enter the, uh, into the second? Uh, can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born, don't miss it, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Do you know that you have to be born of water and the spirit? You can't get around it. Stop trying to make salvation this spiritual activity that you can just do anywhere in your car and in your bed and you don't have to get up and in and God will just come to you. First of all, God does not respond or obey sinners. Sinners have to obey Jesus. I want to get that point. Jesus does not obey sinners. So telling Jesus, come in my heart is a command. Jesus does not respond to sinners in obedience. If you want to be with Jesus Christ, you have to obey Jesus. Jesus does not obey you. He tells you, you have to be born. You have to be born again. Nicodemus didn't understand. What do you mean? Jesus broke it down. To, can I tell you what the ingredients are? The ingredients are. You have to be born of the water and the spirit. Now, here's the thing. You need to go find some water. You do not control the Holy Spirit. How do you know if a person is baptized or not? The Lord sends the Holy Spirit when you are obedient. So you can't even command the Holy Spirit to go. Holy Spirit, come into my life. You, the Holy Spirit don't even listen to you. God responds through your obedience of Jesus's teaching. Now, if you have Christianity is an educated religion, which means if you have not been taught, then then you do not get the biblical result that the Bible says that you would receive if you follow his teachings. All right. Um, I want us to look at uh, another scripture. Uh, look at Acts chapter 8. We're in Acts chapter 8, and let's look at verse 26. Acts chapter 8 and verse 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. Philip is obeying the Holy Spirit, and he's going to preach and teach and do God's will, but he has been commanded to go down uh, uh, from Jerusalem to Gaza, which is desert. Where is Philip? He's in a desert place. By definition, there's, <laughs> there's a lack of water. When you're in a desert place, there's no water there. You know, you're in a dry place. So Philip has left Jerusalem, he went down unto Gaza. He's in this desert place. The Bible says, verse 27, and he, and he rose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, had come to Jerusalem to worship. Now, this Ethiopian man comes, and he's worshiping God, and now he's on his way back home. Philip has been commanded and being led by the spirit. I need to go interact with this man. 
The Bible says, verse 28, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you're, he, he, he joined himself to the chariot and said, do you understand what you're reading? Do you get it? Can you, can you uh, 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 understand and perceive the, the things that are found in that verse? The Bible says in verse 31, and he said, how can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the, the scripture that he was read uh, was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb dumb before a sure, so he opened not his mouth. I want us to skip down to verse 35. Then, Pit, then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Now, here's your same scenario. They're in a desert place. One of your questions was, what, what if somebody is, there is no water? But the Bible says they're in a desert place. Philip is having a Bible study in the desert. He's teaching him, according to verse 35, he's teaching him Jesus. Let's look at verse 36. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the Bible says, and the eunuch said, see, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Here's something that I pull from this verse. If you're going to properly teach Jesus, you have to talk about water. Now, Acts chapter eight, verse 36 aligns with John chapter three, verses five, verses three, four and five. Because when when uh, Nicodemus did not understand what Jesus meant by born again, Jesus broke down the ingredients, water and the spirit. You don't control the spirit, but your obedience is the water. Does the water save? Water is obedience. Jesus is the one that saves his blood saves the blood saves. Well, when do you when did you if, if you if you're telling people they don't have to be baptized to be saved? My question to you is, how did you come in uh, uh, access to the blood? You don't come in access to the blood by praying. You don't come in access to the blood by calling on Jesus's name. There's no scripture that says you interact with the blood of Christ by prayer, by singing, by any other religious activity, but baptism. You have to get into the water. And when you get into the water, according to Romans chapter six, according to Romans chapter six, verses three through, through six, Jesus will meet you there. First, matter of, fact, go, matter of fact, go ahead and read Romans chapter six, verse one through six. He will meet you there. Your obedience into water communicates to God to send the Holy Spirit. I want to say that again. Your obedience to get it. Matter of fact, the only way that you can get in water is somebody has to teach you. If you if you are sitting under a true gospel preacher, it's impossible for me to preach about Jesus and not preach about water. That's almost the equivalent of I can't preach about Jesus and skip over the one church. I can't preach about Jesus and not talk about the blood. All of, all of that is connected. All of that is connected. And so with that, uh, the Bible lets us know, uh, he says it was the eunuch that looked up and said, hey, I see water. The Bible says Philip was just teaching Jesus, which means if you properly teach Jesus, you're going to get to water. The eunuch looked up. Notice what they said earlier. He was in a desert place. Now he's at a point where they, the Bible says they were in the middle of a Bible study. And in the middle of a Bible study, he looked up and said, Matter of fact, the Bible never says that Philip saw it. The Bible says that only the eunuch saw it. The eunuch got Philip's attention and says, hey, I see water. Look at how the Lord provided. He says, I see water. What hinders me to be baptized? Now, he's taught Jesus. Which means at this point, if if if. Uh, the eunuch is the one that's bringing up water and baptism because according to Philip's teaching, water is equated to baptism. How are you going to get baptized and you don't get into water? And how are you going to be saved before baptism? 
That's Disney. You making that up. Nobody was ever saved before baptism. I love when people like to say, well, what about the thief on the cross? The thief on the cross didn't need to be baptized. One of the reasons why the thief on the cross didn't need to be baptized is because Jesus had not died for our sins. A second reason that Jesus did, uh, that that the uh, that the thief on the cross didn't need to be baptized is because if you can talk to Jesus directly, and Jesus says, "I got you," you ain't got to do nothing else. The thief on the cross didn't pray. The thief on the cross didn't repent. The thief on the cross didn't do an offering. The thief on the cross didn't praise. He just said, "Lord, remember me." Jesus said, "I got you." If you can get a verbal confirmation from Jesus that that He got you, you ain't got to do nothing else but sit on that cross and die. The thief on the cross don't have to, the thief on the cross didn't need to do. He didn't need to repent. He didn't need to put in a blue card. He didn't need to do nothing because when Jesus says, "I got you," all he had to do was smile and die. And he was good. Nobody after the death of Jesus Christ. There's nobody that you read was saved and was not baptized. Right. So let's look at this. Verse 37. And Philip said, if you believe with all thine heart, you may. And he answered. Verse 37. The eunuch made his confession and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. He made his confession. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. Notice this. Don't I don't want you to miss this. You, I, I, I don't even know why we would want to argue away water or try to help people. I don't need to help anybody go to heaven. The gospel does that. And anybody that didn't get in the water, they're going to face a great judge. So don't miss this part. And they both went down into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. The Bible says... They both went down into the water. This idea of dipping your hand and throwing it on somebody's head, that ain't baptism. The Bible says that baptism, they both went down into, they, he was taught Jesus. He saw water. He asked, are there any other steps that I'm missing that I need to take? Matter of fact, let's look at that. Look at verse 36. And as they went their way, they came into a certain water and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Is there anything left? The Bible, he says, yes, there is something that's like, he says, you have to believe with all thine heart that you may. Then he made his confession. After he made his confession, they stopped the chariot and they both went down into the water. I don't know why we're trying to argue away water. You got to be baptized and you got to be baptized into water. Well, what if, what if somebody's heart is really sincere? That's a God answer. That's, a, that's God's business. Well, what about my mama? Did, uh, is, are they going to heaven? I don't know. Well, what about my uncle? Is he going to go to heaven? I don't know. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not a judge. <laughs> my job is to preach the gospel and tell you what to do in the land of the living. Whatever whatever decision God gonna make after that is a God's business, and I don't get mad if somebody if God says you know what you you really had a very difficult life and you really wasn't able to receive the full gospel whatever the case may be come on in uh, what I'm gonna get mad for congratulations I just want to make I'm concerned that my name is called well brother Williams how do we ensure that our name is called follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. Now, you want to play Russian roulette and you want to go to Judgment Day and, and try to figure out and determine whether or not you're going to get an extra dose of, of grace and mercy. That's your business. Stop playing with people's soul and stop telling people they don't need to be baptized. Stop telling people that water is not necessary. There's no scripture for that. And where do you get your verse from? Give me book, chapter and verse. Now, I gave you book, chapter and verse where even a man that was in a desert place, God provided water. The Bible says in verse 39, and when they were come up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord called away Philip. That eunuch saw him no more and he went his way. Don't miss it. He went his way rejoicing that God, God will provide for those who desire to obey the gospel. God will make a way. I trust in God. Here's the thing. I trust God. What about the tribe that's living in the um, in a third world country and they're living on an island? God will handle them. God will take care of them. Matter of fact, I want to take you to one more scripture uh, and, and, and uh, 
the lesson will be yours. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. The Bible says there will be no God is so everywhere and so awesome that even when you look at nature for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Even people who you say don't even have access to the word of God. Even if you look at nature, you can still find God. You're going to be judged by what you eat, but even by what is made known to you. People who study astrology, they find God. People who study anatomy and biology, they find God. People who study uh, uh, <laughs> and, and just the uh, physics and the different fields, they, they're like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. They still find because God is everywhere. Even if you study the flowers, God is everywhere. So you, you're going to be judged by what you were exposed to. I do know this. The end won't come until the whole world hears the gospel. That's why we want you to like this, share this. Let's get this message out. I trust God. I trust God on judgment day. I trust God with my mother, my father, my grandmother, my, my, my grandparent, all my family. I, I trust God with the whole world and I trust God with me. And what you need to be focused on is, are you doing what thus saith the Lord? Because if not, you're going to be judged for what you hear. Matter of fact, the Bible says it had been better for you. I'll put the scripture. We'll make sure we put the scripture up. It had been better for you not to have heard the gospel. Then after have heard it, not obey. Don't worry about the person who didn't hear. And God got the babies. God got the children. What about the child that passed? God got all the babies. God, God has all the. Don't worry about your children. God, God, the Bible says Matthew eighteen. Children have their own angel. Don't worry about them. But if you have heard the gospel, it had been better for you to not have heard the gospel. Then have to have hearing it, you didn't obey. Let me tell you, you need to believe that Jesus died for you and he died because you're in a sinful state. If you want to get out of that sinful state, you got to know that he was buried and rose again so that he can give you a new life. And he shed his blood because he paid the cost of your sin. If you'll be willing to repent and turn around and turn unto him, confessing that he is the son of God. If you believe that in your heart, if you if you believe that in your heart, that he is the son of God. Then you have to be baptized in that watery grave. You have to go down into water and, and the Bible promises you all your sins will be washed away. And you will be a child of God, having the Holy Spirit. That's good news. And it don't cost you a dime. We arguing about water, but it don't cost you. It's free. Whatever other circumstances, the what ifs and whatever the circumstances after that, that's between them and God. Amen. Hit that like button. Hit that share button. Let's get this message out. Let's let people hear the gospel. Even if it's that last part, let 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 it go throughout all the world so that people can know what to do to be saved. For all of those who support this ministry, thank you. You don't just listen. You sow a seed, you give to this. And we thank you so much for what you've given. This, what you give, allows us to continue to do this ministry. Um, listen, we are here to heal, help, and restore. Be blessed. We are here to heal, help, and restore.